So my credit card information got stolen at TwitchCon. That's it, that's my intro. Hey, I'm Amanda and I'm watching Small Entertainment. Today we were talking about TwitchCon, Las Vegas, 2023. Probably the last one that's gonna be in Vegas, frankly. Uh, but I wasn't going to make this video. I wasn't going to. I know I say that, but I really wasn't. I had zero desire to. I fully, I just started streaming on Twitch, okay? I'm an affiliate, it's very fun, I'm having fun with it. And I fully was like, oh, I'm gonna work on my Halloween costume and just talk about TwitchCon, take questions, and uh. And then everyone that I spoke to was like, what do you mean you're not making a video that's your thing? And this is gonna be the only one in Vegas. You love doing a one and done. And I said, it's not the same thing. But then I said, fine. And so now I'm doing another one. And so clearly I just need to stop saying that I don't like doing more than one video on an event because no one's listening to me. But really quick, let me tell you about the sponsor for today's video, because if you want a super cool website, you have got to be using Squarespace. The platform that runs swallentertainment.com is back and they want to help you build a website for whatever you may need. They have flexible website templates. I'm using Fluid Engine. They can customize anything you could possibly want. You can run email campaigns or update or start your online store, or you can even just make a place where you can have a portfolio of all of your social media posts or art in one spot. Grow your personal brand and get started on building a personal website today. Go to squarespace.com to get a two week free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash swall entertainment to get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. There's like next to no B-roll, zero, because there wasn't going to be a video. To make up for that, here is a wonderful video uh, from Scootish for you. Hey, this is, this, is, this is footage for Amanda's video about TwitchCon Las Vegas. I'm Scootish and I almost got her punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. <laughs> so TwitchCon was in Vegas. Typically it's in San Diego, all right? Uh, I went last year for the first time to San Diego and I had a very fun time at TwitchCon. Feel free to go check out my video on that from last year. I went as a non-streamer. I went as a member of the community. This year I am an affiliate. I just started streaming on Twitch. I am working a little bit with Twitch on that. They were like, well, you have a channel, you don't stream, why not? I said, I don't know how. And they were like, we can help you. I said, cool. Anyways, now I'm an affiliate and I'm streaming on Twitch. So I had actually been planning on going to TwitchCon again this year, even without that, not even for a video because I had a lot of fun last year and uh, it was actually like a really great way for me to meet people actually outside of VidCon because VidCon, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's been going on there, but like a lot of the like long-term friends that I have now, I met last year at TwitchCon, you know, or we at least like kept talking more and we had like ways to talk more. And it was just fun last year. And so I was like, you know what? I'll go this for all fun. And now I'm streaming. So it's like, I kind of got to go. That being said, if I had waited literally three days to get registered for TwitchCon, I would not have been there. Um, not for any particular reason. It, well, there is, um, basically the Austin Grand Prix was also this weekend and Costco had a whole weekend ticket package. And if I had just seen that literally two days before, I would not have gone to Vegas, frankly. So um, I was annoying my friend Hassan the entire weekend because I would not stop talking about F1. Basically, I was told, allegedly, hypothetically, this is not told to me by an employee. This was a game of telephone. Apparently, some of you think that I have inside sources at events now, which is very funny. Typically, no. I have inside sources after events because an employee will reach out to me and be like, oh my God, you were right. How did you guess? Like, it's things like that that I get a lot, but I don't typically have inside sources at these events. Typically, and maybe someone will reach out to me and be like, hey, we'd love for you to come. And then I rip the event apart and then they're mad they invite me. But I heard through the grapevine that basically uh, San Diego Convention Center wanted to raise the rent or something, whatever it was, all alleged for the convention in uh, San Diego. And uh, they said, no, we'll take it somewhere else. And Vegas was like, come here, okay? Because Vegas, like how they're bringing Formula One to Vegas, they really want to bring more stuff to Vegas. They want it to just not be like, the booze and gamble destination. They want you all to come there because when you come there for other things, guess what you end up doing? Drinking and gambling, which is basically what everyone did this entire weekend as well. So it's, it's like a symbiotic relationship. You bring the event, we supply the debauchery. It's fun. It's whatever. Okay. So they brought everything to Vegas. And then I allegedly heard that they will be going back to San Diego for the next two years. Allegedly. The problem with having it in Vegas is um, we're getting closer to the Grand Prix. Uh, it's about three weeks away at the time of me recording this. And it was also the same weekend as when we were young fast, which I went to last year, which I was on the wait list for and I never got into this year, which was annoying. But basically the hotels were a nightmare. They were expensive. It was a whole thing. Uh, traffic was a nightmare because of the construction. So it was like having it in Vegas was actually shockingly 
annoying, frankly. And the convention center is on the strip, but it's so far down the strip that walking around can be quite annoying. And I was hearing the same complaints from a lot of people. It was about 300 bucks for the whole weekend. I did pay for the party. I'm not gonna talk about the party because I didn't go. Mainly because I had fun last year, but last year was like at Padres Stadium, which was very fun for me as a family, a child of a baseball family. Like that was really cool to be like, I'm on the diamond. Like, this is fun. That was really cool for me. Um, and then I had someone be weird with me the entire time I was trying to vibe with Megan Thee Stallion. I was trying to be on my hot girl shit and he would not get out of my peripheral. He kept leaning down into my space and I was like, stop. And he was just like, oh, I can't stand here with you. Fucking no, not if you're gonna do this shit, God. This year was at Area 15, which I've been to, which I enjoy a lot. I think it's fun. However, I don't like it when it's an unregulated massive party like this. Um, and anyone can just buy a ticket. So I didn't go. I went and got K barbecue instead and I had a lot of fun, but I did pay for the ticket, which is why my thing was like 300 bucks or so. So I actually became an affiliate after I had bought my registration and they said, oh, don't worry if you've like made partner or affiliate or what have you, your badge will reflect whatever you are currently because they basically pull it off of your Twitch. Day one, when we go in line to get into the convention center, um, having us line up outside in the sun, not under a tarp or anything. Apparently I didn't want to elaborate on this thought. Um, it was hot. And for some reason there were bees. Why were there bees in a parking lot? I'm so confused. Get inside. Now the convention center, I've been there before I was there for CES. And it's interesting because the uh, convention center obviously has the expo hall floor. It was in the uh, convention center West, which is like the main big hall that you see when you're driving down the strip. It was massive. I ended up going straight to the glitch theater because my friend had gotten in and she was saving me a seat for the opening ceremonies. Literally as I walked in is when the proposal happened. I literally sat down and the proposal was happening. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. Left, went and walked around, did a little lap. Now the thing about the convention center, I really liked the expo hall itself last year. Because I, as someone who's been to quite a few conventions, I'm always looking at, do they know their demographic? More than anything, do the vibes match? How do they utilize this massive space that they have gotten? What are the booth sizes? Things like that. How is the mobility situation? Like, can you get through from one booth to the next booth? Like what's the crowding situation? And I will say this, I don't think I ever experienced massive crowding at TwitchCon. I want to make that abundantly clear. I don't know what the overall attendance was this year compared to last year. Obviously it was, I would say predominantly older because we were in Vegas and all of the after parties, pretty much everything was 21 and up, which I think really contributed to the fact that I saw predominantly adults and teenagers at this event versus young kids. Like I see it say, VidCon, or even compared to last year, I felt like there was way more young people last year comparatively. I do think that's because of the location, which I enjoyed as an adult, but you know, I understand if young fans and young creators being like, I don't want to go then if there's nothing for me to do. So I can see both sides of that. But the crowding was definitely uh, very mild. I would say the lines would get long for say meet and greets uh, at certain times for the Glitch Theater and the Rivals Arena. Food lines would get bad, but they weren't like unbearably bad, I would say. Say. It was fine. I don't think there was ever a time where I was genuinely like, God, there is nothing to do but stand in line here. So I will say that. That's a very good plus. Um, as far as the convention center as well, I like the TwitchCon keeps the lights low. They have like the lights low. They have neon lighting. They kind of let the booths handle the lighting more than anything. And then they have a few lights available for safety, basically, or at some of the major exits. But keeping the lights low, I think kind of matches the vibes of Twitch where it's kind of like just low key, not low key. You get my point. But like bringing it down a little notch so it feels almost almost a little more intimate. That sounds stupid, but I think it matches very well. And then that way towards the end of the night, there was one time where we were there and they turned the lights back on and kicked us out. And it was, you could feel the difference. You could feel the tone change. You could feel like the, Hey guys, it's time to pack up and get out. You know, I think it, I think it matched really well. And I think that worked. That being said, I feel like the convention center was much hollower this year. And I don't fully know how to express why it felt that way. I would like to make a joke about how it's because they had no foam pits, but I don't think that's really it. Last year, comparatively, the meet and greets and the, um, Artist Alley was in kind of across the way, a separate big, almost outdoor slash greenhouse room at San Diego. And so I think that being over there, but now all being in the same room this time is why the expo hall itself felt much smaller. Even though I know, like I still had the same amount of mobility situations, all that. I don't know. I'd be interested to know what the final tally was between boosts from this year to last year. Cause maybe that's why I'm thinking it felt more hollow. My credit card being stolen. <laughs> We're not quite sure how it happened. 
happen. So basically it was my business card that got skimmed at some point. And we know it was skimmed or copied or something because I had the card with me. I still have the card. I never lost the card. So it had to have been at some point when I used it or when I was out and about in Vegas. Now this has never happened to me in Vegas. Typically it happens to me in San Diego, frankly. It never happens to me in Vegas. But I assume that at some point my card was skimmed and uh, luckily my bank was very on top of it. First thing Sunday morning, I just woke up. We'd been out late the night before for the party. We'll talk more about that in a second. We just know that they, when I called them, they said, okay, you are in Vegas currently, correct? And I said, yes. They said, okay, so you're not in Canada and you're not in Mexico trying to buy train tickets. No, I'm not. Definitely not. And luckily the combined totals were like 75 bucks in total, but they were test purchases. We're fairly certain. So luckily we caught it and it's all handed, but my credit card information was stolen at TwitchCon. Yeah. And then when I posted it, everyone was like, this is on brand for you. And I, I hate that that's correct. Anyways, back to the convention itself. The thing about Vegas is there's a lot to do, but there's a lot to do if you're over 21. So for me, it's fun for a lot of, uh, a few of my mutuals are like 20, like a couple, literally a couple of months away. So it was like a little annoying for them. As you guys know, I don't drink. And so like, I love the food scene in Vegas. I really do. I like the ability to go and do stuff in Vegas. Uh, gambling, I fooled around a little bit this trip because everyone else was. And I was like, yeah, this will be fun. We'll go gamble. Um, I only lost, well, I shouldn't say I only lost. I lost 600 bucks in total. Um, but some people I spoke to lost upwards of like five grand. So you know what? I, I'm counting that as a win. Saturday night was the night of a lot of stuff going down. So the convention center, I was there pretty much all day walking around a lot more into a panel or two that evening. Uh, the panels are all upstairs separated. I didn't go to a ton of panels, frankly, uh, but we went to like the drag show and things like that, that were on the main glitch theater stage, and all of that. Me and Hassan left because I got invited to a non-gaming streamers uh, invite at Resorts World, like meet up basically. Hassan wanted to come because he doesn't stream all that often. He wanted to get like meet more other non-gaming streamers, even though he does game, he wanted to like meet up some more people and stuff. So he came with me to Resorts World. While we were at Resorts World, Hassan gets a frantic phone call. Also, before we talk about this, we're going to talk about some sensitive topics really quickly. So be warned, trigger warning, all of that. Get a frantic phone call. All right. Uh, making sure that we are not in the convention center. And if we are in the convention center, you need to leave immediately. We were at Resorts World. We were like, no, we're at like a meetup. What's going on? Basically, uh, allegedly, the rumor that was going around was that Too Mad, who is, um, how do you describe him? A troll, a creator troll. I don't know. As someone who just has a bit and keeps doing it, keeps doing a variety of bits, inflammatory on purpose, that type of thing. The rumor was, is that he was posting that he was going to come to TwitchCon on his way to TwitchCon with some pew pews, with some, with some water toys. I'm using other words to describe what I think you know what I mean. And uh, that everyone needed to leave. Allegedly the police were called, all of that, but I had not seen that. So I was already at, off the site when this had happened, but uh, people were telling me, and the cops had already been there because it's a convention, they're directing the flow of traffic. So I have no idea if maybe that's where that rumor got a little more like, ooh, it's real, it's happening. Um, but people were panicking. A few people, a bunch of people messaged us. Um, we're making sure that we were leaving. We checked in with a couple of people to make sure that they were leaving because at the end of the day at events like this. I've talked about this a lot. When you hear about something, you might as well treat it as it's true in the moment to be safe. Okay. Because you don't have time to be worried about it potentially being a hoax. It's just safer for everyone involved to treat it as a legitimate threat. Even if you don't think that anything will really come out of it. That's a weird way of me for, for me to phrase that. But basically in the moment, we just had to treat it like it was true. And you know, I, I frankly, in the moment I was like, I don't know how true that is. So I was checking, trying to find if there was anything that indicated that it had been posted, but it was basically this fucked up game of telephone at that point. And I was just making, I was messaging people. I was like, Hey, like, trying not to cause a panic. I didn't want to post anything publicly and like freak people out. Cause then when you cause a panic, that's where, you know, more people get hurt because then you have trampling, you have crowd crush, you have all this stuff. So it, I was doing what I thought was the safest thing in that moment. So that night and the next day was really trying to figure out like what else had happened. And basically what I heard, and this is all alleged. Okay. Was that the threat was never legitimate. The threat was never even a hoax really. What had happened was allegedly Too Mad was reaching out to partners to see if 
he could get their partner badges to wear to go to TwitchCon. And somewhere in that of him reaching out to people, it got around that he was doing that so that he could have an in into TwitchCon so he could bring weapons in. Allegedly. Basically, I was told that like the rumor was never true, but he doesn't care that the, that's the rumor that people ran with, which is a whole other thing, frankly. That's what it was. The threat was not legitimate, but a lot of people were reaching out to me and they were like, please talk about this. So I, this is, I'm telling it to you as I experienced it in the moment and what I know now. Saturday night, uh, I went to the meetup and then we went and had dinner with a couple of people. And then we went to the Razor Dolce Gabbana offline TV party at Zook nightclub in resorts world. We got there early and we were told like, Hey, you're, you're going to be on the list, but like it's over capacity. Like people are still trying to get in. So make sure you're here at 11 on the dot. The party started at 11. I didn't have time to go change because we had gone to resorts world for the meetup and then had dinner with a bunch of people. So we were like originally going to go and change and I didn't. So I just ended up wearing my sweater to the party. Okay. And that was, I was vibing. I was like, am I, are they going to let me in? Vegas nightclubs are not, not strict with their, uh, dress code policies. Always keep that in mind. Uh, but they let me in, which was very nice. And, uh, then I ended up turning my top into a tube top because women in STEM, so we had a table, which was very cool. We had bottle service. The guy was like, you sure you want anything else? You just want soda water? I was like, yeah, basically I'm not, I, I'm not drinking around these people. No offense, but like, I don't know. As far as like, if, if I were to drink, I don't think a creator party is where I want to get drunk. I would want something a little more low key and less where I'm like, to be like, let's go, you know, like just let's chill out. Okay. Cause there was a lot of weird clout chasing behavior this whole weekend. Cause I see it. I'm in LA. I see the fame chasing. I see the social climbing. I see the clout chasing, but to see it done routinely from fans and other creators alike at this event was fascinating. I know that exists here on YouTube, but like to see it so be so prevalent to the culture of TwitchCon was fascinating to me. I know I keep saying fascinating because it was just like, there, there's no really other word for it. Like it was scary on some instances, but it was typically not scary. It was just more like, what are you doing? What is happening right now? Like, do you not think that everyone can see what's happening? And some were more subtle about it than others. Some were just blatant. Cause also I was wearing an affiliate badge, okay? So my badge had affiliate on it, which I think is what really contributed to, uh, if someone didn't know me already, they didn't see me as, um, someone to worry about or someone to get attention from or anything like that. Um, so it was interesting to be like the fly on the wall basically. But then what would happen is they'd be like, Oh, why are you hanging out with partners? Or what are you doing talking with these brands? Or like, what are you doing? Like that type of thing. And then I, there was one instance where I know for a fact, this probably happened where, um, someone who was like kind of lukewarm to me one day, the next day is running up and giving me a hug. She's asking what I'm doing today, all this stuff. And I'm like, Oh, you Googled me. <laughs> you looked at my social. I know what you're doing. And my screen name on Twitch is Swell Entertainment. So if you search Swell Entertainment, you're going to find my YouTube channel, obviously. And like that number on YouTube is not like a crazy number, despite what everyone in my life tells me. I do consider myself a mid-sized creator, despite what people, like what Hassan says, basically Hassan's like, uh, no, you're a massive creator. I need you to shut the fuck up right now. I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't know. I don't know if that's what it is where by comparison, like that's impressive or something. I don't know. But like, it was like, I would, it would be interesting to see the switch flip or like I would be like explaining myself to someone like oh yeah no I'm like I just started streaming I'm a variety streamer I'm trying a bunch of things figuring things out I'm building furniture you know getting my my workspace all set up you know on stream it's fun and then one of you guys would come up to me like hey can I get a photo like like super chill you guys were mostly great. One of you was freaking me out a little bit. If you don't think it's you, you probably, probably wasn't you. So it was, it was fine for the most part, but they like, you guys would come up at the same time it, and I could just see the switch flip <laughs> every time I would see the switch flip where I'd be like talking with someone and be like, so what, what, what do you make videos on? You know, like, what do you, I thought you were just, a, you were an affiliate. Like, what do you mean? Like you're, what are your streams about? What are you doing? Maybe it's cause I see it from the fan perspective as well as like the, the creator perspective well, as well as like the outside creator perspective. And it would be so blatant at times, like in, in such 
large quantities. Like for example, okay, I dealt with, I call them barnacles. A barnacle is someone who latches onto you and basically kind of follows you around and is using you to introduce them to other people typically. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's to get into parties. For me, I get it a lot with companies, companies, employees latch onto me to get invite to, uh, talk with other creators because I'm a creator's creator. A lot of creators know me either legitimately or we're mutuals or they've seen me or whatever. And they, they, it's an in basically for these people. If you're a barnacle and you know, you're a barnacle, or if I'm describing you, um, know that we know we're not fans. I'm also a young woman where this is typically men that do this to me, which I I'm never happy with. Sometimes fans become barnacles, but for me, it's typically employees of big companies. And sometimes it's great. Sometimes I become good friends with these people, but a lot of times I'm just like, I know what you're doing. You know, like this is not fun for me. And this is not the symbiotic relationship that you think it is. Hassan and I were able to get up on the DJ stand where like all the big streamers and stuff were. So that was fun to hang out with them and stuff for a little bit. I left around 3 a.m. because I had like hit a wall at some point. I was just tired. I'm an early riser. I can't turn it off, unfortunately. And so there's just a point in the night where it's like, I'll pull an all-nighter, but if I know I'm hitting a wall, I need to hit a wall. So I went home uh, and passed out and then got two hours of sleep. And then when I woke up is when Hassan had gone to bed. Sunday, I went and did a little business meeting and then I went back to the convention hall, hanging around, saw a bunch of stuff. I really didn't buy anything this year for some reason. Normally I spend a lot of money in the artist alley. I really didn't this year. I don't know why. Um, there were things that I liked, but there was nothing where I was like foaming at the mouth for it. Oh yeah, I should explain the uh, me nearly getting punts in the face by, because of Scootish. So basically, uh, Saturday night, I had gone to uh, the Arab Streamers uh, panel, okay, with Hassan. And uh, the next day we were walking around and we saw Denim's like standing and hanging out. I was like, oh, there's Denim's. Like, oh yeah, like, like just like, oh, like there she is. Like, it was just like a hello. I'm sure I said it in a way that was like a parasocial simping way. I think that might've been what it was. Cause Scootish was like, oh yeah, Denim's. And then walks away to go up to her. And I just assumed that he was going to say hi. And we were like with a group. And then all of a sudden he's like whispering in her ear and pointing at me. I was like, what? And he was like, I just told her that you've been talking mad shit about her. And he thinks it's the funniest shit ever. And I, who already think that everyone hates me and finds me incredibly annoying, was like, what the fuck did you just do? <laughs> we had met, we think, at Creator Clash briefly, uh, but we don't talk. We don't know each other. And so she's like, reading my bad. I was like, oh yeah, what's the deal? Swell and entertainment or something. Like she didn't even say my name right, which is kind of funny on my badge. And then I was like, we don't know each other. And he was like, are you serious? I was like, yeah, no, we don't know each other. But like, there was this moment she was never going to actually punch me in the face. I don't think. But in my anxiety riddled brain, I was like, I'm going to get into a fight with denims right now. <laughs> it was fine. She came over later while we were all sitting and like, I explained what he had done and we were like talking. He was like, I fully thought you two knew each other. And I thought this would be this super funny thing. And I was like, I get it, but also fuck. <laughs> We're all good, but Scootish, I fully thought was gonna get me punched in the face, which is why when I wanted to go check out the partner lounge, I was like, give me your badge. We're swapping badges for a minute. <laughs> I went and checked out the partner lounge. I stole a Diet Coke and uh, popcorn. We were taught, we were sitting for like literally five minutes because the con was gonna close and uh, the uh, they were gonna clear out the partner lounge. So it's like, it's a big room, but I will give them this. It's better than the creator lounge on the floor at VidCon itself because there's actual snacks and stuff there versus just like, coffee and waters or even just waters for the creator hall. They had like a giant etch sketch and stuff. Me and Frogan were trying to make like a penis in it. Left and then we went and got K barbecue again because everyone was like, you guys went to K barbecue without us. And I was like, yes, we did. We'll go again though. So I've eaten a lot of food this trip, a lot of Korean barbecue. And it was very, very good. I had fun. Um, TwitchCon again next year. I'll probably go, especially if I'm still streaming on Twitch. I'm enjoying streaming on Twitch right now. I'm having fun with it. So we'll see, you know, what the future holds, what the future brings. I didn't hear about anything else too crazy. I know a lot of people lost money gambling, but that's Vegas. That's not TwitchCon. A lot of people were telling me that like, that it had other events last year at TwitchCon, like outside of TwitchCon for creators to go to and stuff that I got invited to a few of them with. They said, yeah, you know, it was hard to do out here because the options are all bars and clubs. We would like to have like a drink station, but we don't want it to be like the requirement to be in the space basically, or we don't want it to be loud. We want more control over the space and things like that. I get that being difficult for a lot of brands to kind of do things. Like the only big thing that I knew of was the Dolce & Gabbana razor party. You know, that was like the big one. Um, there was a few other things where like a bunch of 
of creators that I talked to, it's like, yeah, I went to the same party last year. I had heard about it last year and it was last year was much more intimate and fun with creators. But then this year was a lot of industry people. Cause typically what happens at events is someone puts it on an event. I'm using a paintbrush to demonstrate. Someone puts on an event one year. Okay. And it's usually fun, intimate, small. Okay. People enjoy themselves. Okay. And then brands the following year, they're like, oh my God, I can go have direct access with these massive creators that I've been trying to follow this whole time. Okay. Hey buddy, friend of mine, that's also a creator. Can you get me an invite to this? Can I be your plus one? Can I do this? And it seems like that kept happening at a lot of these events where it was a lot of, uh, companies getting in with creators, which is fine. I get it's the nature of these things. Um, and if you feed people, always a bonus for uh, anyone, but you know, sometimes creators, like we just want to chill out and like talk shit. I don't know. We just want to like hang out and not worry about being on or not worried about being sold to and things like that. That's really going to be it. Have you ever done TwitchCon? Uh, will you go to TwitchCon if it goes back to San Diego? Do you think it'll stay in Vegas and I'm completely off in my information? Do you think that the person who stole my credit card information was buying a train ticket or two train tickets? Do you think that they were going to just go for food? Like, what do we think they were like leaving the country for? You know, like, what do you think the vibes were? Cause I've had stuff like get hacked and stolen and stuff before and they never get fun stuff. Like you never try and buy like a Bugatti. No, you always try to buy like a train ticket, DoorDash, use my Instacart to buy literal chips, you know, like do something fun. God, anyways, uh, let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Swell Shenanigans podcast. Reminder that Swell Entertainment is now available on Spotify. Reminder, I am now on Twitch. Reminder that I have merch. I don't know if there'll be a design for this one, but uh, someone did suggest that I make a uh, attendees love me, organizers fear me, merch design. So I might do that with like a random fish, you know, like women love me, fish fear me, just have a fish with like a ticket. Can we do that? That would be fun. Like a fish holding a ticket. That would be fun. I think that might be that. I might do that. Fourth wall now has sweaters. So I have a big whole plan for like sweaters. I think it'll be fun. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also want to be a drama, list it down below. Like to me on my social media. That'll be all up here. And that's going to be Apple of the day. Goodbye. I don't know. Someone was telling me it's like, yeah, with the way Twitch is set up, like you can't really not grow on Twitch without clout chasing to some degree. But I don't know. I don't really agree with that. But I don't know. I'm also coming into Twitch streaming as someone with a YouTube, a pre-existing YouTube audience. So I don't know if I'm really a good barometer for that. Thank you, Amy, Andrew, Alan, Awful, Aslan, BJ, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crispy, Crispy, Crash, China, Corey, Daniela, Everyone, Don, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Ghostly, Hopeless, Homer, Incognito, Jasmine, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Justin, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lauren, Lamb, Lex, Lise, Louise, Mae West, Madeline, Matt, Matthew, Medic, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Pink, Philip, Richard, Rob, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly Plastic, Tyler, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Querty, Victor, Randy, Winter, Wendy, Will, William, Zendry, Zwing.